So today we're going to solve the econ number 1652, diffuse the bomb in an optimal way. So for this problem, you're given a code and an integer key, and you need to return the decrypted code. So the algorithm to decrypt the code is you need to replace every number, and if k is greater than zero, you replace every number with the sum of the next k numbers. And if k is less than zero, then you replace every number in the code with the sum of the previous k numbers. So yeah, we're just going to implement that. So if the key is greater than zero, then we have one function. And if the key is less or equal than zero, we just return another function, right? So we have just two different cases. And this one is, is actually redundant because summing k numbers where k is zero is the same as just replacing every element with zero. So yeah, this one, you can straight away ignore this one and just solve this too. So, the function for k is 1 is going to keep the sum of a sliding window of, k, of length k. And so by doing that, we're optimizing the brute force solution where the runtime complexity would be O of n times k. Here, the time complexity is just going to be O of n. So let's implement the function. So as I said, we need to keep track of the sum of a sliding window of length k. So at the beginning, we just have the first k elements of the array. So we sum their values like this. So after this loop, sum of k now has the sum of the first k elements in the array. And now we need to have our result, which we will later on return. And what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the elements in the array and basically replace them with their new value, updated value, right? So at the beginning, you're just going to push in some values in the result. And you need to remember to update your sum of k as you go through the array elements, right? So here, right now, we have the sum of the first k numbers in the array. But actually, you want the next k numbers. So you want to remove the first one and add the one that is entering in your sliding window of length k. Because obviously, you want to keep your sliding window with a constant length. So if you remove the current one, like this, you remove something, then you obviously also need to add something else to make it back to length of k, right? So the entering, the, the exiting element, the one that we are removing from the sum, is just the current one, because we don't want it, we, we want the next k number, not including the current one, and the entering one is just i plus k, and you need to remember to do the modulo by the array length, so that if you go out of bounds, you don't get an error, so by doing this, you're always inside of the bounds of the array. And yeah, and then you just sum, you just, you now have the updated sum of the next k numbers, and so you can just push it to the results array. So now we need to implement the case two, and to do that, we're actually going to reference the case one function. So you can observe that since here, our code array is circular, summing the next k numbers is the same as summing the previous k numbers if you reverse the array before, right? So if we just pass in this function, the array reversed, then it's going to be doing the correct thing. And we're just going to have to remember to also multiply k by minus one so that it becomes positive, right? So instead of writing a new code, we're just going to use the same old one by reversing the array first so that when it goes and tries to take the next k numbers, it instead takes the previous k numbers because we've reversed them, right? And the array is circular, so we can do that. Okay, so we're just going to reverse the array and pass it into k's one. And also remember that right now k is negative, so we need to make it positive, like this. And now there's just one more thing, and it's that since we've passed in the array reversed, then we're also going to get the result reversed. So we now need to reverse the result as well, so that it's like we never reversed anything in the first place. Right, so I'm going to submit the solution to share that it works. And the time complexity here is O of n, because we just go through every element twice. And the space complexity is O of n, because we need to keep the result. So that's optimal, because there is obviously no way to do it without keeping an array of the result. Unless you count modifying the input as being O of 1, you can decide, it depends on your definition. But anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you for watching and bye.